Good morning and welcome to our fourth day of walking with Jesus through the Word. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. We're going back to Genesis chapter 3 this morning. We're going to get the bad news of the fall that makes the good news that we read about in Matthew 1 yesterday necessary. And uh, this is how sin and death and alienation came into the world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are good in all your ways. We pray that you would help us as we look to your word. We pray that you would teach us your word and that you would write it on our hearts and that you would build us up in your word. And we pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 3. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock, and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire will be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for you were taken out of it, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because... She was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever? Therefore the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. That is Genesis chapter 3, the fall. Now, on the surface of it, 
Many people have scratched their heads over the years and thought, I don't get it. A serpent comes in talking. Eve listens to him. They eat some fruit that, yeah, they knew they weren't supposed to eat it. But why would that cause such absolute chaos, devastation, alienation? And the real issue that people miss is that Adam and Eve were disobeying God. They didn't have a sinful nature. They were not compelled by their inner desires toward evil as we are because we're born bent and broken because of this event. They were morally good, but changeably so. And they were subject to temptation, but they had free will. They could have chosen one way or the other. They deliberately made the choice to listen to the words of the enemy instead of submitting to the word of God, to doubt the goodness of God, to serve themselves, and, in the words of R.C. Sproul, to commit cosmic treason. God was their king. God had loved them. God had given them life. God had kept them alive. God had blessed them with the Garden of Eden. God had given them everything good to enjoy. God had given them one another, and they were delighted in one another. One thing he said to them not to do, and they would not keep that commandment. They broke it, and so they were broken by it because the only way for us to have peace the only way for us to have wholeness, the only way for us to have joy is to have it in the Lord who made us and in right relationship with him and in fellowship with him. C.S. Lewis said, God will not give us joy, happiness apart from himself. He cannot because there is no such thing. The human heart since the fall has been in a pursuit of happiness, to use the words of the Declaration of Independence, but apart from God. We acknowledge, of course, in a sort of perfunctory way that there is a God who gave us life. Most people are not atheists, but that's all. We just say, yeah, there's a God, and yeah, he gave us life. Now I want to pursue being happy on my own terms. And that's exactly what Adam and Eve were doing, and it's the same thing people have been doing ever since. Notice that when Satan comes, he casts doubt on the word of God. He comes saying, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And notice that the woman, instead of rebuking him, answers him. Adam was there too. Okay, If you look down in verse 6, she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Adam was the Lord of creation. He had authority over the serpent to banish it. As soon as he heard that serpent challenging the word of God, as soon as Eve heard that serpent challenging the word of God, they should have banished that serpent from the garden. They should have cursed it in the name of the Lord and not listened to a word it had to say. Did God actually say? Mm. Whenever we start doubting the word of God, we're putting ourselves on slippery ground. What happened when they considered the temptation of Satan? It caused them to manipulate the word of God as well. Eve added to the word of God, neither shall you touch it lest you die. She added to God's word, maybe intending to sound pious and holy, but you don't add to God's word any more than you would take away from it. God's word is perfect on its own. Satan lies and says, now more directly, you will not surely die for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, what a trick. They were already like God. They were already made in the image of God. And they already knew what good and evil was. Good is the good that God gave them and the good that God commanded them to enjoy. And evil were the things that God forbid them from doing. They knew that already. They were already like God, and they already knew the one true definition of good and evil. What Satan meant was, you can be like God in determining out of your own heart what is good and evil. You will know for yourself, for yourself, 
what is good and evil. Now, God's able to do that because God is good, perfectly holy, without any shadow of turning. And so when God knows something to be good, it is good. And when God knows something to be evil, it is evil. But we're not like that. And trying to be like that brought Adam and Eve a world of hurt. Notice there were three things about the forbidden fruit that were tempting. It was good for food. It was a light to the eyes. And it was desired to make one wise. These are the three common temptations that are throughout scripture and throughout human existence. Jesus faced these same three temptations. The first thing Satan said to him in his temptation in the wilderness was, turn this stone into bread. That is good for food. First John chapter 2 calls this the lust of the flesh, our appetites, our hungers, our cravings. Second, it's a delight to the eyes. First John 2 calls this the lust of the eyes. Jesus was shown all the kingdoms of the world and all their riches, and he was told, all of this will be yours if you bow down and worship me. And the third, it was desirable to make one wise. First John 2 calls that the pride of life. Jesus was told by Satan, cast yourself down from the temple, for he will com- it is written, Psalm 91, he will give his angels charge over you, and they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. What a great way to show off in front of everybody. That's pride of life. The same three temptations come to us, different forms, but our carnal appetites, our material covetousness, and our pride, our sense of self-importance, are what always lead us away from God and into danger. Notice, though, that even as Adam and Eve fell into sin, God brought a gospel promise. The first person he spoke to, even though it was Adam and Eve who sinned, The first one that God speaks to is the serpent. And he tells the serpent in verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel or he will crush your head and you will crush his heel. There's one coming who will be the seed of a woman. Very unique expression in Hebrew. The offspring of a woman, not a man, who will come and crush the head of the serpent. That's a death blow even as the serpent crushes his heel, inflicting a mortal wound. And that is a picture of the cross. There's later a picture of faith and another picture of the cross in verses 20 and 21. There's an exercise of faith where Adam calls his wife's name Eve. Even in the midst of being cursed, Adam realizes we're going to be able to live. God is going to be merciful to us. He's going to not kill us right here, right now. He's going to let us live for some time. And and this woman will become Eve, the mother of all living. And so by faith, he trusts that God will continue to be good to them, even as they have to be driven out of the garden. And then there's another picture of the cross when the Lord God makes for Adam and Eve garments of skin and clothes them. It requires a sacrifice of blood to provide them with a proper covering for their shame and nakedness. And that's another picture of the cross. Well, there's much more we could say about Genesis 3. It's a great chapter. It's very important. Hope you'll read over it and meditate on it some more. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this chapter in your word. Please write it on our hearts. Help us to learn the lessons you would have us to learn from it and to be wiser for the time we spend in your word together. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for your time and joining us. We'll be back in Genesis tomorrow, Genesis chapter 4, for day 5 of walking with Jesus through the Word. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm